The Tower of Babel The sons of Noah were named Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These sons in turn became the fathers of children, so that the descendants of Noah were very numerous. One of these descendants, named Nimrod, was a mighty hunter and a man of power and authority in the land, and it has even been said that the people worshipped him as a god. In those days men liked to build high towers reaching away up toward the heavens. Perhaps they were afraid of another flood, and perhaps they simply wished to show what they could do. But, however that may be, ruins of towers can still be seen in various parts of the world, one of the most noted of which is that of the Tower of Nimrod. It is forty feet high and stands on the top of a hill near the river Euphrates in Asia. In the time of Nimrod, the people said, Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So they began to build the tower, and they made it very strong indeed, and kept rising higher and higher toward the heavens thinking Jewish tradition or story tells us that they would have a shelter in which they would be perfectly safe from any flood which might come or any fire. There were some of the people also who wished to use the tower as a temple for the idols which they worshipped. Six hundred thousand men worked upon this wonderful tower, so the story goes on to say, and they kept up the work until the tower rose to a height of seventy miles, so that toward the last it took a year to get materials for the work up to the top, where the laborers were employed. Of course, this story is exaggerated, but without doubt the tower rose to a great height and was a wonderful piece of work. God was not pleased with what the people were doing, however, because they thought themselves so great and powerful that they had no need of him, and so he put an end to their bold plans. Up to this time, all the people of the world had spoken the same language, but now when they were working upon this wonderful tower, they commenced to talk in different tongues, so that they could not understand each other, and there was great confusion. Owing to this, they were obliged to give up the building of the tower, and they separated themselves into groups or divisions, each division speaking the same language. And then they spread out over the world, forming the various nations. The tower was called the Tower of Babel because of the Babel, or confusing of tongues that had taken place there, and it was left unfinished to be a monument of God's power and man's weakness without him. These men were skillful in building, else they never could have gone as far as they did in their stupendous work, and God was willing that they should exercise their skill, as he is willing that people shall do now. But when they thought themselves equal to him, they learned how weak they really were in comparison. The story teaches the great lesson of dependence upon God and submission to his will and his laws. End of chapter 8